Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Tuesday evening here in Australia, market is down again. 1.6%, we're under that $2.6 trillion mark, just ever so slightly. Bitcoin dominance is now under 41%. Again, the altcoins are starting to explode. There's a small bit of volume there. And again, it is people coming in and buying the dips. But as I've said over the last few days, I'm not sure that the bottom's in yet. I think we might slowly continue to go down over the week, particularly particularly getting to Friday because this Friday will be the last Friday of the month and it's when options and things close and almost every single month and the last Friday we have seen the prices of crypto go down so my gut feeling is that we're going to go a little bit lower I definitely think Bitcoin can get down to that kind of $53,000 level I'm not saying it will get there I can just see it happening and I think other cryptos will follow uh, fairly similar as well but anyway let's move on and have a look how the charts are doing again Bitcoin price 56,000 uh, it's been lower it got down to I think nearly 50 5,000 uh, and then bounce back up a little bit but again it's kind of all over the place and I mean gas prices good lord that's as cheap as I've seen them in ages so 6.7 percent people are scared at the moment and uh, taking profits and we'll have to wait and see a lot of people are most likely still trying to go long on Bitcoin at the moment and that is why I think that price will continue to be pushed down again particularly with options ending this friday and things like that some people say options don't have anything to do with it but the last friday of every month for a while now we have seen the price of the entire crypto market generally go down it's been a while since we just kind of blew through it you know when we're in that big surge uh, for quite some time now it's generally been like I said it goes down not a massive dump or anything we've already seen the big dump coming from 69 down to you know sort of 53 we made it down now it's pushed up a little bit but I just get the feeling we might push back down to 55,000 to 53,000 uh, and then maybe this weekend or next week we'll start to see a move back to the upside but I must stress, none of what I say is ever financial advice, so please don't take it as that. I'm not a financial advisor. That's just what my gut's telling me. You've got to work it out for yourself. And again, yeah, in investing, trading, and all the rest of it, it's a risky game. So don't simply take the word of someone off YouTube or just one person in general. Make sure you're getting a collective of information and sorting through that yourself and making your own informed uh, and hopefully intelligent decision. But all right, again, looks like a bit of a bloodbath, kind of red all over the place, not a lot of green, but we can see crypto.com is one of the ones that are doing really well. So what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? There we go, Sandbox, another big pump, 30%. Uh, Amp, Elron, Mana, Engine, 10%, nice. Crypt, uh, yeah, crypto.com, Curve doing nice. Quant, Adam, we got lots of nice movers. Voyager's been doing quite well. Aave with a small move, and we're going to have a look at Aave very, very shortly. So there's definitely some movers, considering the market is down overall. But again, overall, the market's down. So what has not performed so well then? There we can see flows down, icons down, stacks, Nexo, Kasama, you know, Wax has been coming down for a little while. Nothing kind of too crazy. Shiba Inu come back down again, basic attention token. So again, really, the losses are kind of... You know, there's more of them they're not as large but there's just more of them uh, and that's generally the way it works and the ones that do pump really well uh, as we saw before we can go back to the green i mean look at that nearly 40 percent 30 percent 20 percent not too far from 15 percent 10 percent there's some really nice movers there but again overall the market's generally down all right let's go have a look at the bitcoin chart and kind of see where we're at so as we can see Bitcoin has definitely come down and now we are starting to get close to that kind of 55 ish thousand dollar level which is sort of around about just yeah thereabouts and this is where I definitely kind of see it coming to over the next few days again possibly even getting down to this kind of fifty three thousand dollar level by the time Friday comes around for options and then after that whether it happens you know on the weekend or whether it maybe happens next week I think we start to move up but again never financial advice that's just what my gut's telling me my gut's been wrong before it's not always right but that's just yeah where I'm at like I said I've got my buy orders in 
My Bitcoin buy order, my first one, must be just about getting ready to be triggered at the moment. And I've also got uh, an Ethereum buy in. And look, if it continues to go down, I probably will have to come in and set another uh, Bitcoin buy down around sort of here. I mean, 53 sort of on the money almost, I think would not be a bad spot, but more sort of probably here, I reckon, 53,000 sort of 800 ish, I think would be another good spot to put a buy in. But again, Maybe we're going to see some real max pain and we're going to come back and start to test this level, 48, sort of 49, uh, 50-ish thousand dollars. Now, again, I'll have buy orders set in for that if it's going to happen. I'm just not sure it is. We'll have to wait and see though. Ethereum USD. So let's have a look. Same kind of thing. Ethereum's faring a little bit better, but I'm not going to be surprised if we don't see Ethereum basically get down to the $4,000 level hereabouts you know not quite there uh, but again similar to Bitcoin maybe this needs to be pushed through and we're actually going to come down to this 30 sort of 500 3600 again I've got a buy order set in for Ethereum we're not quite there yet although again as I said the other day set a high set a lower high set a lower high set a similar high uh, then we set a higher high, but unfortunately it rolled over. So at the moment, just waiting to see exactly what happens. Now there is a lot of buying pressure though. Like when, when Ethereum is getting down to basically the four thousand dollar level, it is getting bought up. But again, this is still very early in, in the day. This could roll over, and like I said, I see the downside to the market pushing out till kind of Friday to the weekend. That is that is where I'm at. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Look, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think that options play any role? And have you been noticing that the last Friday of every month, for the few days before, the market is generally retracing? You get through Friday and then kind of Friday evening, Saturday morning, it can start to recover and particularly the next week. So again, down below, I'd love to know your thoughts. You know, do you think the options make any difference and do you think we're going to continue to go down for at least until sort of Friday maybe Saturday all right this chart has blew me away I've been talking about Matic for ages this is on a big time frame so I don't know if this is going to play out but have a look at this this is Matic versus the dollar look what it did here it exploded up it then went sideways for ages basically went sideways from May 2019 to December 2020. For ages it was traveling sideways and then it just blew up. It had this big massive gain. I mean what kind of gain are we sort of talking here? Let's get a rough I mean it had a gain. Holy cow. What is that? 18,150%. And, and I don't think I even got it. It could have been a little bit more. You know, you can say basically, you know, yeah, we'll just round it off anyway. 18,000%. Now look what it's doing on the larger time frame. Massive bull flag. Massive, massive bull flag. Now, I don't know if this is going to play out. I'm not a charting expert, but this is crazy. Look at this. Bang, all the way up down here. It's found its bottom. It's found its top basically nearly touched the bottom got it close to the top and again look at it and it's just getting you know the volatility is getting less and less and less now this may not break out here it may you know sort of negate and travel sideways further but let's say this does play out the way you do this is you grab this oh sorry that's really annoying that it did that that's not what I wanted Let's see if I can do this. Bring this down. Hopefully, if I grab it here, it'll let me do it. No. Oh, it's going to be a pain. All right. We can still do it. It's basically something roughly like that. Could you imagine? If it goes to a hundred and thirty dollars 
Now, please don't rush out and say, oh my God, it's going to $130. That's definitely not what I'm saying. Because again, I may have mixed that, messed that up a little bit and maybe it was a little bit more like this. But if this plays out, and again, that was an 18,000% move from there down to there. So let's just get rid of this. And again, I'll put this back down here. Where has this gone now? Of course, it's always got to play out in the middle of a stream. But anyway, that's the way things go sometimes. So, all right. Again, we know it was an 18,000% move. So let's do that from over here. Let's get this. Let's go from here and go up 18,000%. A little bit less than that. All right, we can go there. I mean, geez, I lost it. That's, <laughs> this is going so well. Again, 18,000%, that's, I think I went way over. There we go. Imagine going from basically a dollar 40 all the way up to $263. Now again, I'm not saying Matic is about to do this. That will be absolutely unbelievable if it does. But yeah, unbelievably interesting. <laughs> I've seen crazier things. I mean, it's already done it. I bought Matic at $0.02 cents, uh, and it got all the way up to $2.20. So I've definitely seen it do it. Now we're just going to have to wait and see. Is it going to do something similar? Again, I think 18,000% is unlikely, but I mean, even if Matic could just get to something like sort of $10, that would be absolutely unbelievable considering it's a dollar forty something. And that is really not that much in the when a bull market really starts to fire off. Now, what you need to remember is no, you know, everyone wants to buy into this kind of stuff. But what you gotta remember is this is where you really want to buy. You want to just be constantly buying when it's dead and caught, not dead, but when it's quiet and no one's talking about it, no one's thinking about it. Because it's you just build up this massive, massive base, you know what I mean? Rather than chucking 50 bucks here and turn it into whatever, you just keep putting money in until you know it gets ready to explode. And then when it finally does explode, you've built up such a good base that the gains are exponential. So again, an 18,000% move, $263. Again, I'm not sure Matic's going to do that, but what I know is in 2017, things like Neo, uh, they went from about $2 to I think $180 in the absolute peak. So I would not be surprised if Matic does that. And this is a massive kind of bull flag, massive bull pennant happening here. We'll have to wait and see. Now again, have a look at Matic against Bitcoin. Traveling sideways for ages. So it's quiet. It's not dumping. It's found its bottom. It's bounced off here a couple of times. Once, twice, and now it's sideways. So it's quiet. Not, not too many people are really doing anything. Again, look at this. Sideways for ages. Boom. And then sideways, not for quite as long. Boom. Again, sideways. Boom. Sideways. Boom. It has played out over and over again on the Matic chart. As you can see right here, pumps up, goes sideways, pumps up, goes sideways, pumps up, goes sideways, pumps up, kind of goes sideways. And that is what I believe is playing out right now again on the Matic chart. I really think Matic is getting ready to make a massive move, particularly with Ethereum layer one and all the problem with the fees and things like that. And again, there's talk that maybe Uniswap is now going to go to Polygon. Oh, sorry, I've been calling it Matic. I mean Polygon. This just looks super bullish. And again, we go over to the ETH chart. Same thing. Here it is. You know, it pumps up. It comes down, finds old resistance as support. Pumps up. Comes down, finds some old resistance along here as support. Pumps up. And now we're just having massive sideways action with Polygon against Ethereum. I just get the feeling. Again, everyone's chasing all these things that are pumping and that's great. 
the big money is made when you buy into something and it's just quiet and no one's really talking about it and doing anything with it. It still needs to be a good project, but wow, I just get the feeling like Matic is going to absolutely explode. I don't know if it's coming tomorrow. I don't know if it's coming this year. I don't know if it's even going to come. Uh, I, I don't know what stage it will happen next year, if it's going to come next year, but I just get the feeling like it's setting itself up for something massive. Again, there's people talking about Ethereum going to 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. If Ethereum can do that, then imagine what Matic can do. It's got a much smaller market cap and people are still going to be piling into it. So I would not be surprised if Matic did get up to some sort of crazy number like a like $100. And again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I just know what I saw in 2017. I saw coins go from $2 to $180. Now, it didn't happen overnight. It took some time, but those are the things that can happen. All right, just a couple of stories I want to focus on. So people are getting a little bit bullish about cryptocurrencies, even though they're coming down at the moment, and it's because US President Joe Biden says Jerome Powell is set for a second term in the uh, Fed chair. And, you know, he's all about printing money. He's printed a ton of money. Now, some people are scared that maybe he's going to rein it back in, and that's probably something to do with, you know, the prices coming down and things like that. But a lot of people are also fairly bullish. But, you know, the bearish sentiment, or not so much the bearish sentiment, but the sentiment is to the downside at the moment. We'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. Some SEC news. So a couple of companies have now pulled out of uh, Bitcoin futures ETFs because they were not allowed to have any spot Bitcoin to back it up. So Anna Pag, hopefully I'll say this, Paglia, a top executive at Invesco, explained that her, her company withdrew its Bitcoin futures ETF application because of the SEC's rules saying they could not have any spot Bitcoin whatsoever. Now, Bitwise Assets, Asset Management also pulled off its pulled out of its filing for a futures-based ETF signing. It is not an appropriate decision for the long term. Again, everyone wants the spot Bitcoin ETF. That is what's really going to push the price. The futures ETF, it's all paper-based. It's all just dollar-denominated. So this is kind of sad. I do think it's only a matter of time until the SEC approves a spot uh, Bitcoin ETF. But unfortunately, I think it'll most likely come at the most inappropriate time in the middle of a bear market and things like that. Could be wrong. We'll wait and see. All right, Celsius. They have now increased their Bitcoin mining investment to 500 million. So again, this is how they're now paying for uh, the rewards that everyone gets. Once upon a time, they were really, excuse me, they were really just trading, and that's how they were paying back, you know, the Bitcoin and all the rest of it. Well, the smart idea is now to mine their own Bitcoin. That is a much uh, better way, much sort of safer way. They don't have to worry about you know, trading and all the rest of it and things, you know, not doing so well. So they have added another $500 million into their mining business. So I really like Celsius. Now I can't find the link uh, for my Celsius thing, but go over to Celsius anyway. You don't have to use my link. I will eventually get it up. But they pay great rewards. And again, never financial advice. It is still risky. There's regulatory issues that could happen to them and all sorts of things. But I've been using Celsius for a while and I really like them and I personally recommend them, not financially though. You've got to do that uh, for yourself. Now something interesting I heard was there was a guy, I watched uh, a video and he was saying that a lot of the coins that are selling at the moment from the institutions are actually the DeFi coins. But that shouldn't scare people too much because what, you know, even though institutions, they sound like they must be really smart, they're not always that smart. Don't get me wrong, there's some smart people, but they're not always the smartest. At the moment, they're selling their DeFi and chasing all these things that are pumping, and eventually it's going to come back to DeFi, and then they're going to jump into it once DeFi has already started to pump. Now, a coin that I really like, Aave. Again, look at this. Bang, had the big pump up, and they have now been traveling sideways basically all year. An entire year they've been going sideways. This is against the dollar. Now they've been higher and they've been lower, but basically just sideways action for a year. The blue chip, in my opinion, of DeFi, Aave. And again, they have a financial license in Europe. They're looking to get a financial license in 
Asia. I think in Singapore is where they're going to go. There's talk about Ave Pro coming out. Again, KY, uh, C, AML, all that kind of stuff. And the banks, uh, again, it's only talk, nothing's confirmed, that they're going to use that to start paying yield. I get the feeling Ave, exactly like Matic, just sideways for so long, everyone's basically gone quiet on it and dead on it. And when this gets ready to explode, it is going to be huge. DeFi is not dead. Again, as I said, there was talk of the institution selling the DeFi coins. It's just because it's quiet and it's not doing anything. It's not pumping. They're still bringing in the yield. They're still doing that. They're just not the hot thing. And so institutions are, you know, a lot like normal investors. They're trying to chase the new flashy thing. I'm sure some of them understand that this is when you want to buy though, when it's quiet and no one else is really talking about it and it's just traveling sideways. Again, never financial advice. You do you. I've already sort of backed the truck up a little bit on Aave and I exchanged a whole stack of coins that had underperformed and put them into Aave because I really like Aave. And the reason for this is against the dollar. So it had its big breakout. Again, it was down at like 20 bucks and went all the way up to, I don't know, 600 $700, something like that. And now it's back down at 270 A lot of sideways movement. Have a look at it against Bitcoin. Again, similar patterns play out. It breaks up, it comes back down, finds some support, pumps up, comes back down, finds some support. Now look at it. It's almost down to here. So I definitely think Aave could go lower. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it couldn't. But just the volatility is so quiet on Aave at the moment against Bitcoin. It's basically gone down to sort of nothing. And that won't last forever. Eventually, everyone will be coming back to DeFi. And particularly if we get that news that Aave is now, you know, again, providing liquidity uh, and yield returns for a number of big banks. That will absolutely blow the DeFi space up because people want yield. But at the moment, they don't really need to get yield because they're just buying all these coins that are pumping. But eventually those coins that pump, like Aave, they'll just die off and they'll be really slow. And that's when everyone's already jumping out and trying to find the next thing that's pumping. DeFi will have its next run. I just don't know when it is, but Aave for me is the blue chip in DeFi. Now again, that's my personal opinion. Last thing though, I want you to have a look at how it was against ETH. I brought this to you a while ago. This was the low. Look how high it got. And it's just been coming down. Now, it's not so much that Aave is losing price. It has lost some price because it went all the way up to nearly 700. And it's been down as low as 180. But I think now it's back at 270. This is just, it's not pumping as much as Ethereum has been. But look at this. It got down to its low and it's already started to bounce back up. Now, I'm not saying it can't go lower. It absolutely could. No one knows exactly what's going to happen. But again, Matic and Aave, they are my picks at the moment. I am buying both of them. I expect them to make big, big, massive moves. I just don't know when it's happening. But I like to buy down here. I don't want to be buying things up here and then eventually I lose all my money. Well, not so much lose your money. Again, Aave is still kind of holding in their dollar terms, but it's just being outpaced. You want to pick it up when no one else wants it if you really believe in the project because then you're going to experience all of this and hopefully you take some profits on the way up. You've also got to ask yourself, do you think Aave can go above its old all-time high? And I go by the candles, not so much the wicks. So do you think one Aave can get up to 0.3 of an Ethereum? Well, imagine Ethereum is worth $10,000 and all of a sudden Aave is worth a third of $10,000. That's $270 coin right now to $3,000. That is nearly a 10x. Think about it. All right, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. You know where my headspace is at, and I love buying stuff when it's down here. This is my thing. I don't want to buy things when they're up here. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. And like I said, I think we probably keep going down until the weekend. I don't think there's going to be major dips, but definitely down. And I'll see you next time.